Hi brothers and sisters, back for another short video for 8th Day Dawning. Uh, we're going to take a look at that still, small voice that God speaks to us in if we're willing to settle down and listen. And uh, we're shown when God uses that voice. So we'll start in uh, 1 Kings chapter 19. It has to do with Elisha, or Elijah rather. He flees to the Mount Horeb. Horeb, as we come to realize, was another name for Zion. Um, as gave in Deuteronomy, oh, I can't remember the chapter. I think it's four, but I'm probably wrong. Uh, but anyway, uh, verse 9, it says, i got to shine my light here. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. That would be Elijah. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said, she said, not him. We'll say, God said. How's that? Because God is not a he, like they like to preach. That's the man-made religious life fail. So, the word of the Lord came to him, and God said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And uh, he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God. Now, I am going to change God, Lord God here. It's 136, daughter Zion's number. So, Elijah was actually in uh, battle against Baal. That's who he was in battle against. And he had become very fearful because Ahab and Jezebel had begun to pursue him in the land. And um, so he fled, right, in great fear. And uh, he says, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. So for her, for her sake, for the daughter of Zion's sake, the other half of his covenant. Um, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, her covenant. And have thrown down thine altars. Now understand the altars here are not um, an offering of blood sacrifice. She says, I require no blood of you. I never did. What these altars were for was for the offering up of a thanksgiving offering. And those come freely from the heart. You could offer whatever you wanted as long as it was a free will offering offered up in thanksgiving and normally they were of high quality because when you thank somebody you want to give them the best that you have and so we're not looking at a blood altar here um, so but they have thrown down your altars and they have slain the prophets with the sword and I even I only am left and they seek my life to take it away so we see that Eli Elijah here was very much afraid he was very frightened right now and so in verse 11 we find this, and he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. Actually, God said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break it in pieces. The rocks before the Lord, um, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, right? And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. So what we see here is God was approaching Elijah in the manner that God knew that Elijah needed to be approached in. And that was with a still, small voice. Because we know when God is dealing with deliverance, God's presence is identified with these three other characteristics. They are identified as wind, earthquakes, and fire. They are identified with these manifestations as being the manifestations of God in a great deliverance. And we see that in the Exodus in just about all three cases. And, but what Elijah was needing at this time was comfort. He didn't need the earthquake, he didn't need the wind, he didn't need the fire. What he needed was comfort from God at this time. And comfort, we know God knows all about how to comfort God's children. And so God approaches Elijah in this very still, small voice. And what, what by approaching Elijah with this still, small voice, it kind of was a request on God's part, in a way, to get Elijah to settle down enough from the fear that he was feeling to be able to listen and hear the voice of God. So it says, 
And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. So, and it was so when Elijah heard it. So that at one point he did begin to still himself. He became um, quiet enough within himself. There wasn't the fear there. That he began to hear God speak in this still small voice. And that, I think, brought great comfort to him. Especially... God knowing what was frightening so bad was the idea that he was left alone. And isn't that what every one of us saints feel today, especially in the world that we've got going on? It feels very hostile towards us. Like at any time our life can become in great danger, uh, that they will be pursuing us and coming after us, and that we feel very alone uh, at many points in our lives, especially when we go to move out in a boat in public by ourselves, you feel very isolated. And so sometimes maybe we need to be quiet within ourselves when we go about our daily tasks and just keep keep the idea in mind that God is there to comfort us with God's still small voice. And I think we need that more today than ever. But in a loud world, it's really hard to um, keep our minds focused on that still small voice. And it was so that when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? So you know what fear does. It paralyzes us, doesn't it? And when it paralyzes us, it simply means that we don't act on behalf of our God and do the things that God really would like us to do. And I'm guilty of this. We all are, I think. Um, maybe not. Maybe there's some that's uh, a lot less guilty of it. I know when I become paralyzed with fear, I really need to be seeking God's voice. And sometimes when we're really afraid, it's difficult to hear it, which is, uh, you know, a real, um, you know, uh, I forget the word I'm looking for, tribute to, you know, to Elijah here, that he did hear. You know, even as frightened as he was, he settled himself down enough to hear that still small voice of God, that comfort that he needed. He, he knew he needed to settle down and to seek God. And so he did, and uh, he says, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, and they have thrown down your altars, they have slain your prophets with the sword, and I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. He was greatly afeared. And the Lord said unto him, Go return on the way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Heziel to be king over Syria. So he still had a purpose. He still had work to do. Don't worry. God ain't going to let nothing take you out until God decides it's time. <laughs> Up until the time your time goes, you go. You've got a purpose. And uh, so this was part of his purpose. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, Shall thou anoint to be king over Israel? And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abmehola, shall thou anoint to be prophet? And it come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Haziel shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu, Elisha, shall slay. Yet, this is where God really reassures him, I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which have not kissed him. Baal, him. So God is saying to Elisha, you know, take comfort. There's still 7,000 that have not bowed to a male God, to a man as God. Baal links back to your husband who wanted to be Lord and ruler. And we know that those men were in covenant with harlot spirit. Jezebel would be one of them. She was a harlot, uh, bent on building hubby up in the land as a great God and Lord and master. And Elisha was not for that. He knew what keep the land, kept the land protected and safe was the covenant with the daughters of Zion. And so when he says he was jealous for the Lord here, the Lord's number is 136, and that's daughter Zion's number. Now we'll briefly go over to Jeremiah 23. And, you know, if you're going to... If you're going to hear from God, you got to get in a quiet place and, and determine that you really do want to hear God's voice. 
that you're not going to go ask these big questions that your spirit, that you have within your spirit, and you're going to run to the men on the pulpit called foxes most of the time, that's going to tell you what really tickles their ears and tastes like honey on their tongue. You really have to get in a quiet place. And for me, nine times out of ten, I tend to hear the spirit behind my right ear. I can't speak for anybody else, but I just know that that tends to be where I hear the spirit when I often am asking a question. And uh, God says, come let us reason the answers out together. If something doesn't make sense to me, then I'll sit quietly for a very long time. Often I'll put on a pretty light and I'll just rock in my chair and I'll allow the Spirit to... I spend time with the Spirit. I want to spend time with the Holy Spirit. That's the one I want to hear from. And God says, reason it out with me. Reason it out. And that means getting in a quiet place and allowing the Spirit, you know, to say, look, is there a question within you that don't make sense? Ask it. Think it out loud with me in a quiet place. You know, sometimes that's hard to do because we live in a loud world. Um, but here in Jeremiah 23, they were claiming that they were in contact with the Lord through dreams and visions, and they clearly were not. They were the imaginations of their wicked minds, and God says, and the, the reason why we need to get in that quiet place with God, it tells us here, um, let me see if I can find it, I should have marked it out, no, it's back here, so Jeremiah 23, it says, um, uh, Okay, so verse 28, and we'll read this. It says, The prophet that had the dream, fine, if you've had a dream, then just tell it. Don't speak as if it came from me. This is what God is saying here. The prophet that had the dream, let him simply tell the dream. And the one that hath my word, then speak my word faithfully. For what is chaff to the wheat? So what is my word? And God says, study to show yourself approved unto me, not unto man. Study my word so that you do know what it actually is saying. Don't go to the foxes on the pulpit that just goes and reads commentary because it tickles their ears, because it was fed to them from their fathers, from their forefathers and way back. You come and you reason it out within your spirit and you look for me is what you do. These men were having these dreams and they were prophesying through Baal, once again, which leads us right back to Elijah being in fear. And, and what does it say? Uh, verse 27, what thing to cause my people to forget my name, she says. They have forgotten my name by their dreams. Their false dreams. They're dreamers. They're dreaming it up as they go along. And if you think the powers of darkness don't have power over your dreams, well, we're crazy. A dream from God should really stand out. It really should. Um, to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which I tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Well, what we learned on this channel, the other channel, Ruth Abbey, was that the name for Baal was your husband who wanted to rule over you as Lord and Master. And part of bringing that into play was to prophesy through false dreams and visions. And that's why you really do need to get in a quiet place, one that's not full of fear. You need to settle yourself down. We all do, especially in this crazy world we're living in today. And we really need to seek that still small voice of God and pray for a great deliverance because one is required today. Um, but if you have the word of the Lord, then it says, what is chaff to the wheat? So what is the true word of the Lord? What is the truth compared to a dream? God's saying, it's my truth. You know, study it. Know it. So that when, it, when questions come up, there's answers for others who are searching for answers too. And maybe are too frightened to get into the quieter places and hear that still small voice that will speak to them and help to guide them in the direction that they truly need. Um, so, there's the video, 
don't know that it'll help anybody. Um, but I know in these trying times, we need to be listening to that still small voice. So thanks for watching. Pray you're blessed with an abundance of truth. And thanks for watching.